Today, I'm taking you in the forest in search of interesting subjects to capture while sharing my top five macro photography tips. However, what's really gonna set today's session apart is the use of this crazy weird LED lighting setup, which hopefully gonna create exciting results. For this shoot, I'll be relying on my usual camera setup, which is my Canon R5 paired with my 100 millimeter macro lens and my versatile invertible column tripod. Now make sure you stick until the end as I'm gonna be showing you my whole process from composing the shot, focus bracketing, and easily focus stacking the image using Luminar Neo, which is the sponsor of today's video. Connecting with nature is not just a way to enjoy peaceful moments, but also it helps us discover interesting subjects for macro photography. Since the things we photograph are usually tiny, we need to slow down to be able to see the many opportunities around us. To me, macro photography isn't just about capturing common subjects, but also about learning to notice the often overlooked details and present them in a unique and creative way. As I prepare to take my first shot, I always like to point out that I believe it's easier to move around with your camera and try different composition before using a tripod. This way you can quickly switch between subjects and see what works best for you. In this case, these tiny green mushrooms with a Shrek-like appearance caught my attention. After composing the shot, I took out my flexible arm LED light setup, which I'll be using throughout the video, and started playing with different lighting effects. What's fun about using small light in macro photography is that you can easily lit your subject from behind to create separation from the background. In this composition, I wanted to add a touch of warmth behind the subject, so I placed an orange tinted light right behind it. I'll show you a little bit more about these lights after the first shot, but for now, here's the result after blending 15 images in post-processing. When shooting macro photography, it is tempting to use a smaller aperture to increase the shallow depth of field associated with proximity to the subject. Using a smaller aperture isn't necessarily good or bad, but the issue with that approach is that you lose the ability to soften the background and make your subject really stand out. That's where focus stacking comes in. In the next shot, I'll show you the difference between an image shot at f11 and another one shot at f3.2 using this focus stacking technique. After quickly setting up two lights around my next subjects, a tiny star-shaped plant, I played with the intensity of the lights using my phone to see in real time the effect on my subjects and make fine adjustments. The first image I'll show you was shot at f11 and the second one was shot at f3.2 with 15 focus tagged images. Obviously, focus tacking needs extra steps in post-processing, which I'm going to show you in the next shot after this one. But for these two images, please let me know in the comment section which one you prefer. Composition is one of the most, if not the most important aspect of photography, and that's especially true for macro. It's tempting to just focus on the subject and rely on the shallow depth of field to work its magic, but unfortunately, that won't always give you the best results. In the next shot, simply placing a small lift in front of the lens creates an interesting leading lines that direct the eyes towards the subject, resulting in a more captivating shot. Here, I apply the same technique as in the first shot, lighting from behind what I perceived as the eyes of a small alien creature. What I like about this style of macro photography is that with the camera on the tripod, you can truly experiment with the lighting around the subject and pay attention to all aspects of composition. I can easily lose track of time immersed in just one subject for hours. For this particular shot, I wanted to create a soft background while ensuring all my subjects were in focus. So again, I went into the camera menu and enabled focus bracketing. Once everything was set up, I used a two second timer on my camera and captured all the images at once. We'll soon return to the forest, but first let me demonstrate how I go about blending the image together to create a seamless final image. Back in the studio, let's first open up Luminar Neo. Now it's important to mention that I'm not very familiar with the software, but I thought it would be better that way since you'll be able to relate even more. All right, let's click add photo and select the 15 bracketed images we just took. Now here's a closer look at one image so you can see how little of the subject is really in focus. The software can focus stack up to 100 images, but for this composition, let's select 15 shots and drag them onto the focus stacking feature and click stack. Now, I don't know how to say it without sounding like a vacuum cleaner salesperson. I have nothing against vacuum cleaner salesperson, but that focus stacking feature is enough for me to want to use this software. Look how seamless the image looks with just one click. 
Now, obviously, the sponsor of today's video wouldn't be happy if I only showed you this feature, so let's try to quickly make this image a little better. Let's first pull down the preset tab and see what effect we can get. All right, so here, I think I like the one they called Perfect Macro. Let's go with this one. All right, here in the right-hand side, the Edit tab, we can see all the current edits and make minor adjustments if needed. But let's jump to the Erase tool and try to remove this dust spot using the Remove Dust Spot feature. All right, that was quick. I also want to remove this tiny dark spot because I find it a little distracting. So I just need to select and click Erase. Yup. So I like the overall luminosity of the shot, but I want to include some vignetting to further draw the eyes towards the center of the frame. I think a cool feature here is to be able to place the vignette where I want. That's a great feature. Even though this image is already sharp, let's sharpen it a little bit more, just like that, and then remove a bit of noise using the denoise feature. All right, just like that. Let's compare what we had in the beginning. So I think just like that, we made the shot a little bit more interesting, more, more pleasing to the eye with a little bit more pop. Now let's say we like the feeling of this shot. We can easily go down there and save all the edit as presets and use them later on if we feel like it. Of course, Luminar Neo can do a lot more than that, a lot more crazy stuff too. But I thought it was a good way to show you how quickly we can manage to create interesting images without too much effort. If you want to try Luminar Neo and see for yourself how quickly you can create interesting image without too much editing knowledge, please check the link in the description and use the promo code DANIEL10 for 10% off your order. Thanks again for Luminar Neo for sponsoring this video. This topic may be a bit controversial, but let me elaborate on it. I often receive comments about my use of artificial lighting or how I manually position the subjects to create an image. Some find it intriguing, while others may consider it unethical, and I respect all opinion on that matter. From my perspective, if I can play with elements and apply multiple skills and techniques to bring my vision to life, it's quite similar to how painters select different brushes to achieve different results. I always try to keep in mind that rules are human constructs and should be at least questioned, if not broken. Create your own path and enjoy the process. Here, I stumbled upon what I refer to as a helicopter seed and decided to position it manually on what initially caught my attention, a giant mushroom growing on the side of this old tree stump. With the sun coming up fast, I had to quickly set up my shot before it was too late. As I set up my shot, I noticed the background was a little too dull, so I added a green leaf to create an interesting diagonal element that kept the eye within the frame while also creating depth to the image. Please share how you feel about manipulating your subject by adding or removing elements to craft your own image. There's a lot of value in looking at how other photographers create their images. It can quickly give you fresh ideas and open up new creative circuits in your brain. My one piece of advice here is try not to get too caught up in watching tutorial videos without actually trying the techniques yourself. Like anything else in life, if you want to improve in photography, you need to practice what you learn and create good habits around it. If you've made it this far into the video, please inspire me by sharing what you would like to see in future videos. The key takeaway here is to go out, have fun, practice, and most importantly, keep moving.